DJ Switch speaks, encourages Nigerians and their answers, second wave of answers protest to continue in their quests for justice, in their quests to have a social politically egalitarian society. Ladies and gentlemen, to watch the video, please I enjoy you to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell for subsequent updates. Thank you as you well. Don't forget to drop your comment and give Hi. us thumbs up. How are you? God greatly bless uh, you for watching. So I was going to do this live, but the network was bad, so I will uh, post a video instead. First off, I'm doing okay. Thank you. I hope you all are doing all right. Mm? All right. So uh, I've been offline for a while. Um, I logged on yesterday. I brought myself up to speed with regards to news or as much of it as I could and what's happening. From Lekki to Obibo to Zabamari. I, I hope I said that right. If not, I apologize. Um, and to places we've never heard of or about. And it is gut-wrenching, to say the very least. So I want to share a few things with you guys, okay? First of all, I know the fight that we're fighting, it is not a fair fight. It is not a fair fight by a long shot. We're up against people that have all the power, that have all the money, resources, access. They control all the security arms. Corruption is, is the order of the day. Lies on top of lies on top of lies. Lie, not kill Mohammed. It is like being thrown into a gunfight with a stick. How do, you, how, do you win? how do you win a fight like that? So yes, it's very demoralizing. On the other hand is our movement. Oh boy, to see pictures of dead people on your timeline non-stop all day. Hear stories of people and survivors and victims and one has lost his leg, the other one his arm. Oh boy, it is depressing mentally spiritually, emotionally, physically, it is depressing. I get it. And so we, we switch off. No pun intended. We tune to something else. You know, how am I going to make my next daily bread? We join in, a, in one of these artist wars. Club wars. Club wars. Twitter wars. Who wore it better? But please allow me to remind you of the people who cannot switch it off, who do not have the luxury to debate with us in these Twitter wars, who can never ever again in their life think of how to make their next daily bread. Please allow me to remind you of the real heroes that died for me, that died for you. Look, there are two options as I see it. One I like to call the short-term option. The second one I call the long-term option. Mind you, both options have the same outcome. Short-term option. We go out there, oh, screaming at the top of our voices, demanding change. We want our country back, standing on our constitutional rights. And knowing the government we have, they might just waste all of us away. The end. The second long-term option, we do nothing. We still die. Maybe one by one, but we still die off. Either from poverty, a very poor health sector, security personnel. Take the newspaper boy that was selling his newspaper by the side of the road. And a security personnel of a speaker shot him, side of the road, trying to earn his living, dead. For what? I saw a video of mothers that knew, new mothers that were put outside the hospital because, to be honest, the reason is not even worth mentioning. Because of a poor health system. Guys, listen. I understand that we're angry and we express how we can. We say 600 years for you. Shongo strike you. How do your children feel? You will not sleep well tonight. In fact, you will be seeing me in your dreams. Can you come? Allah, that's Jesus, this Shongo strike you. I understand. That's how we can express ourselves. But let me tell you something that might be hard for you to swallow. You and I are most likely to die before these people, before these leaders. Barring things like a pandemic and 
you know, earthquakes and all that that can just kill anybody. Doesn't care who you are. But you and I are most likely to die before our leaders. I'll give you an example. These people, with all the money that they've stolen, have access to the best medical care that money can buy. In fact, they do their checkups. If anything even wants to, as much as develop, they stop it right there. What do you and I have? What type of, what type of health system can you and I brag about? People die in the hospitals. The boy that, that got his leg cut off, it didn't have to be if proper medical procedures and, and attention was, was, was paid. Or maybe he just doesn't have the money. Here's another example, security. All these are leaders are well guarded by mobile policemen, policemen, even the army guard a lot of these are leaders. Before armed robbers will go and rob those people, they will come to me and your house first. Who do we have guarding us? I can go on. Use Lagos as an example. By the time you're driving in Lagos, the stress, the road network is poor, the road is bad, the stress of just navigating Lagos and dealing with people. Everybody's so on the edge. People are screaming at each other all the time. We are most likely to die of high BP before the people who their security personnel make way on the road for them. They're probably in the back seat reading the newspaper on the phone with their wives. They don't even know what's going on. You say peace of mind, they have peace of mind. Do not be mistaken for one second that you think these people don't sleep well. They do. In their well air conditioned homes, their private jets, they do. Nothing wrong with these things if they were gotten legally, if they were well deserved. I could go on with so many examples, but I'll leave it there. So pick one, long term or short term, because it's the same outcome. Nobody should be forced to do anything. I don't believe that. You don't have to be forced to go out or stay indoors. Everybody's trying to stay alive. So it's very understandable. Everybody knows their own problem. But please, as I said in the beginning, these people have all the power, money, resources, access. It is only one power we have. And our power is just, our power is right. It is our voice. Our voice. And we must use it in whatever capacity that we can. We must use our voice. You see, when we don't see NSARS on the Twitter trend, take for example, NSARS, this is how I see it. It's like a key that opened a door to a big warehouse. Hmm? Palliative gang, come through. And in that warehouse is all the problems plaguing Nigeria. At least the ones we're aware of. You see, when you take it down, when, when, when we don't talk about it, the people that I can assure you are trying to help us, they'll think nothing is really happening. Okay, maybe the government has started um, giving in to the demands of the people. So think about it. I know we're tired. It won't take you up to a minute. Keep it on that table, no matter what. I don't care if it's on number 9 or 10, 11, 5. And some days we might miss it, but please let us try. I can assure you that there are people fighting for us. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You can take my word to the bank. People are fighting for us. Let us help them. Let us be part of the solution. I'll probably talk again to you guys in a couple of days and see how it goes. And also, I do not have any backup accounts. I've, I saw so many. Wow. I don't have any backup accounts. I don't have any representing accounts, any substitute account. I don't. Okay, I'll probably put them on, in the caption just one more time. All right? Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, cheers.